Hi you guys, this is Black and Indigenous American. It's been forever since my last video. In fact, it's been forever since I was chilling on a Saturday and did not go anywhere. Well, I went to the store and I went to worship at this place that I've never been before, but I've watched them stream live a few times and um, it was pretty good and I think I'll probably go back I'm not sure about becoming a member to any um, establishment at this point but I'm glad I went and um, it was good uh, a lot has happened since the last video but I think I am able to refocus on what I should be focusing on in the first place. Right now I'm just watching YouTube, <laughs> watching some other YouTubers, um, in particular this channel called Gay Babe TV. I love watching this, this uh, young family. I just like watching people who are just regular folks enjoying life and sharing tips and ideas and just uh, just a positive group of people and I just like watching it um oh, let's see I'm taking a break um, from a lot of the ripping and running up and down the road and a lot of that was not necessarily necessary but I just felt the need to to go to different places and hang out with different people and you know just like most of us were trying to find our way and we're trying to find ourselves, find purpose in our lives. In my case, I felt like I was catching up. Um, Cause for three years, things were not great. And the past three years, <laughs> um, things have been better, more stable. And so I just, I just feel like before I become someone's mom, I wanted to enjoy life the best I could and go as many places as I could that my wallet would allow me to go. And, you know, meeting new people and some people um, I'm glad I met, but. I don't necessarily want to continue um, being closely connected with them because we just have too many differences and um, it's okay it's okay to um, distance yourself from people who um, don't bring out the best in you and I you know I love them and I wish them well and and uh, I'll probably be seeing them at different functions that we all were uh, attending anyway. But sometimes in order to keep the peace, you have to, you know, agree to disagree and uh, love folks from a distance, pray for them and keep it moving. Um, but today was pretty much relaxing. Um, I'm so used to going and not really having weekends to relax. So this is one weekend that um, I'm thankful that I've been given the rest that I've been neglecting myself with. And so last weekend, um was a go 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 weekend like i went 
to attend my sister's youngest son, which is my nephew, um, his his high school graduation, which was exciting. <laughs> and it's funny because he's been to pretty much all of my graduations since he was born. So he's been to my high school, college, and master's um, graduation. And so... I just felt like, you know, I was glad that I was able to attend and um, I was just very, very proud and, you know, it's just, I call I always called him my little professor and he's not little anymore, he's 18, he just turned 18 the end of May and um, he got accepted to Winston-Salem university so he's going to a historically black college and um i am thinking about driving down to north carolina uh when he moves in on campus i mean it's not like i'm going to move him in but i just want to be there for his you know support you know his support system this is my first nephew out of all three of my sister's boys um well, I should say boys and and daughter. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, he's the first one to, um, you know, go off to a university. So I'm excited for him. I'm happy for him and um, hope all goes well. Um, and then right after the, the graduation from his high school, I went to a powwow and I stayed for a few hours and and um I really enjoyed the Aztec dancers uh, I've seen Aztec dancers at powwows before usually they dance during the intermission or if you want to call it that or um during the dancers and the um, drummers uh, lunch break or dinner break or whatever and so um this group they had children participating and um they um you know had their garments on and and uh it was it was different like it was different from the Aztec dancers I've seen before in the past and um it was it was good um I'm going to say this, and I ain't going to say much else about it, but there was a significant amount of dancers at the beginning, like during Grand Entry, and after that, not many dancers stuck around. Um, later on, I found out that this particular powwow began carting uh, dancers meaning they had to show proof of tribal affiliation. Uh, I'm not sure if they meant state, federal, or maybe even a tribal group that's not necessarily uh, um, state recognized, but just having a tribal card. Um, I don't know, I don't know the details, and I'm not a dancer, so I don't, I don't necessarily know, but many people were, um, there dancing and then I don't know within an hour a lot of them um, were not dancing so I don't know um, but I left I left about 315 ish because I needed to drive back and I decided not to get caught up on 95 north <laughs> anybody know anything about Virginia traffic on 95 know what I'm talking about um so it took me maybe five and a half five and a half hours non-stop from Burlington North Carolina yeah yeah and so that wasn't bad that was non-stop and I mean non-stop like I did not stop to go pee and nothing like within the fourth hour 
yeah, my legs start getting sore and um, yeah, my back start getting stiff. But when I travel alone, I don't like stopping. I just don't. And usually when I travel alone, the trip is no more than four hours. This was a longer trip, but I strategically didn't drink a lot of water. <laughs> Um, throughout the day so I think that kind of helped me not having to stop and pee and plus I got gas before um, I went to the powwow so I had a full tank of gas and my car um, I can get up to 500 530 miles per tank which is not bad but I'm not necessarily excited and happy about my car because um, my car is a Volkswagen and those who have been keeping up with the news know that Volkswagen um, has some emissions um, uh, what's the word They tweak the emissions thing or whatever, and it just sucks because the car is no longer as valuable as it was, and um, something has to be done to the car. And I've been hearing through the grapevine that once they adjust the emissions thing, that I won't be able to get as, mi as much gas mileage, which sucks because... When you have a diesel, when you have a diesel engine, um, unfortunately, the cost of maintenance is a bit more expensive than, let's just say, a Honda or a Toyota. So I'm like, okay, if I am paying more for maintenance and I no longer get as many miles per gallon that I used to now that I have to change whatever with the emissions it's like what's the point of even having the car and plus now the car is not worth as much as it once was so I am not a happy camper with this car but I love the car so it's kind of like a hate love hate relationship with this car but anyway um so oh yeah when I was driving back I decided to try a different route that was kind of off the beaten path slash less traveled road and it's I mean it was beautiful it was near the mountains and all that but you know that moment when you realize you've been driving down a whiny road no markings, no lines on the road. And see, I'm a country girl, so I'm used to that. But no lines on the road, no signs on the road. And you have not seen not one vehicle within 10 minutes of driving. And you look at your cell phone and you realize, oh crap, I don't have any reception. And you get that feeling deep down in your stomach like, God, please, please don't let nothing happen to this car because I'm just choked, pretty much. I'm just choked <laughs> or short, as some people may pronounce it. But I was like, oh, my goodness. So it was kind of intimidating. Um, but after about... 10 minutes of driving, I did see a couple of cars pass by. Again, this is a whiny road, like kind of going down in the valley almost. And then 15 minutes later, I was able to get on a main road and then eventually on a major highway. But note to self, take the main road. Like, 
literally that could have easily have been a Mike Myers Texas Chainsaw Massacre type situation like if something were to have happened no one would have known where to look I mean I, I told a couple of people I was gonna go the back way and and all of that but you traveling alone I mean it was daytime so that helped me feel um, a bit more I guess secure but at the same time anything can happen and that means in the daytime too um but anyway so um last weekend was a lot of ripping and running and driving and just about every weekend I was going somewhere meeting with friends somewhere doing something that required me to hop in my car and drive I'm sure I drove at least 20,000 miles <laughs> this past year like starting 2015 around the springtime until last weekend like I pretty much was going somewhere every single weekend North Carolina I, I've been there and there twice this year uh, Hampton Norfolk um, I've been the Outer Banks um, Eastern Shore, you know, Maryland and um, Virginia and North Carolina. Uh, let's see. You know, just, I mean, I've always wanted to go on road trips and stuff, but I literally <laughs> was going on a road trip within two to three states within where I live. And um, a lot of that driving was okay, but after a while, you just kind of, you're tired and you just don't, it's just not doing it for you anymore. So anyway, um, what are your thoughts on traditional versus competition powwows? And traditional versus powwow regalia I have mixed feelings about it um, I feel like people should wear the regalia that's as close to the traditional regalia of their people in that region um, that's just my take on it I admire those people who were born and raised in their tribal community and they know the customs and the dances they know bee work and all that particularly um uh regarding their people what tends to turn me off is when i see Eastern Woodland people dancing and wearing things at powwows that is not Eastern Woodland. But yet, if a woman wears a traditional garment, in particular uh, a one shoulder out regalia top, apparently it's frowned upon. Um, most of the women dances, the styles and regalia that I've seen at powwows are primarily from out west. And again, if that's your tradition, if that's your people and your customs, I give you all props. I have a problem with people, Eastern Woodland in particular, that give people who are trying to be as close to traditional as possible a hard time when they go to these powwows because in, in particular competition so that's pretty much my opinion about that um, if I ever go into the circle and dance in full regalia I'm going to represent as close as I can as close as I'm able to my region not South Dakota North Dakota New Mexico 
uh, Oklahoma or whatever. Because that's what people want to see. If they're going to go to a local powwow slash native festival or gathering. They want to know about the local people here. You know? And, and to me, it's like... It's like you're feeding into the stereotype of what people always think a Native American is supposed to act, talk, walk, look like based on movies, Hollywood, and there's more to it than Hollywood, and there's more to it than the folks out west. Um, we are first contact people out here on the east coast, and I just feel like that we should be representing as close as we can to how our people wore our clothes, how we talked, um, how we danced, how we sang, um, the types of houses that we lived in, and on and on and on. Then to be a carbon copy of folks out west. That's just my two cents. And, um, you know, just from being around for a minute, you know, I've been exposed to a lot of that, to me, petty um, grievances over different types of regalia. But at the same time, when I go to a powwow and I'm expecting to see the native community that's hosting it, I'm expecting to see their customs and their traditions and things of that nature and I don't see it but I see you know something from Oklahoma or Minnesota or whatever I'm like I didn't come here to see that I could have saw that on TV I could have went to a you know the museum in DC and saw stuff like that I come to a local powwow to see the local people and I want to, you know, be able to appreciate that. I think, I think sometimes when when spectators go to these native functions, they they're expecting to get a taste, a glimpse of the local Native American community. And I, I really don't think a lot of them are getting what they thought they were gonna experience um now this is a lot of talk on my part <laughs> you know i'm no leader i'm no uh expert or anything like that but i just feel like if i'm going to represent i'm going to represent my folks if i'm going to represent i'm going to represent as close as i can to my region Okay, well, this video has gone on long enough, and I'm looking real lazy and whatever, but this is, this is me. I'm keeping it real. I'm laying back. I'm chilling. I'm trying to enjoy this laid-back Saturday. I hope you're enjoying yours, and um, until next time, be blessed. Love yourself and love others. Bye. Take care.